This is the Sony Z90 camera. What I want to do today is just take a very close up and personal look around the camera. So zooming in, getting really, really close to all the kind of buttons and switches and ports. And uh, this really is for people who probably want to buy the camera or are thinking about buying the camera because if not, I'm not quite sure, well, I suppose you might want to have a look around um, a bit of, bit of um, camcorder tech like this, but uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe you probably wouldn't. Anyway, uh, moving along, this is, I guess, probably the configuration that most people will, will use this in. Uh, so with the handle attached for the XLR connectivity and the more sort of pro audio connectivity, iCup connected at the back, which just slots over. It just literally just slots over the, um, just fits over there. And the lens hood on. Uh, you can take that off, but really not sure of many reasons why you would choose to do that. So let's firstly zoom right in and let's get started. So unfortunately, this camera does only come with the one ring here in the front. It's very nice and uh, smooth in its movement. It doesn't have hard stops at the end. Uh, it really does. It, you know, it's all right to get hold of, but your hands are kind of blocked a little bit by this. There are compromises with a camera that's so portable and so small. And this is one of them, I think. It's just a bit awkward to get your hands around here to get around this, zoom, this uh, ring. This ring can either do zoom or focus. It can't do, you know, multiple things. There's only one ring. So you have to choose between zoom and focus. Most of the time, I don't tend to do much zooming. Uh, I'll zoom between shots rather than during a shot. So I tend to use it on uh, uh, as, fo as a focus, focus ring. It's a little bit oversensitive as a focus ring. Uh, so, you know, you can, tiny little movements like that can actually make a difference and I'd really prefer to have this much, much more kind of, you know, so you're focusing and it's, you have to move it more to focus. But it's, it's not perfect by any means. It's the classic Sony focus by wire issue. Uh, you've got your nice kind of Zeiss logo here as you do on many, many Sony cameras because the uh, Zeiss lenses that they use. Here's the uh, switch to change between autofocus and manual focus. Nice and easy, a little bit again, it's quite small, a little bit fiddly to get to all the buttons, but yeah, price you pay for a nice small camera. This is, well, this performs various functions really. It uh, depends on what you press, what kind of was the last operation you, you, you press. So if I wanted to change my shutter speed, I would press shutter speed and that would kind of select the shutter speed and then I can move this up and down to adjust through my, uh, to, to set my shutter, shutter speed. I'll try and show you that on the screen. It's pretty standard, but I'll show it you anyway. Uh, da, 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 da. So yeah, my shutter speed at the moment is set to an eighth of a second. There is a reason for that. So if I, if I select that now, if I press the shutter button and select that, if I roll the wheel up, then of course I can set that to my desired shutter speed using the wheel. I can do that with the uh, joystick and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, set to auto, oh yeah, yeah. So you don't actually have to press to select it again. You press again and it goes back to um, auto mode. You, so you just have to leave it on that until you want something to change something else like the, uh, the iris, for example and then I can change the iris with that same wheel there. So yet yeah, more standard buttons down the side for the menu to, open, to bring up the menu on the screen. Some people, some people say this is kind of quite hard to find and is kind of blocked by the screen. I don't tend to find it too difficult to find the menu button on this camera. Uh, and then we have the iris button, the ISO and gain button and the shutter speed button. This is fairly standard layout for any camera of this type. You'd always expect to have these three buttons available and kind of next to each other in this sort of format. And then next along we have the headphone socket. It's a nice, nice place to put it. I used, uh, used this with the headphones recently and uh, I'm trying to open it the wrong way. And I found this to be a really great spot to have the headphone uh, out here. Nice to get to, little nice neat sort of weather sealed port cover there and uh, just really sort of handy space, I suppose. Let's open up the side of the camera now. <clears throat> and we have our first three custom buttons here, which are actually slow and quick motion, status check and picture profile by standard, but they can, these one, two and three can be programmed to whatever you want. Then our white balance button, power on off button and display button. 
to turn the uh, display to you know to either have it showing the full controls, have it showing nothing. Wrong. Can you actually turn it off as well? I'm not too sure. No. So it just uh, just turns it off. So it goes from full information to kind of lower amount of information to virtually no information and back. Then our playback. So going to our, the thumbnails of the clips that you've just taken. Slot select, because in here we do, of course, have both an A and a B slot. So you can, as you can on most cameras of this type, you can record simultaneously to both. You can conti record continuously to one, one to another and that type of thing. So you have to have a slot select button to decide which slot you're going to record on. Okay. Moving further around now, I'm going to close that section. It's a really nice looking camera, this, I have to say. It's lovely. Uh, and I'm going to just try and get this into shot here. So this, the viewfinder, let me just zoom out slightly here because it's a bit close there, isn't it? The viewfinder uh, works just by pulling out, and there's not much movement on this. It moves up, up and down like that. And as soon as as soon as that's pulled out, the camera turns on, and I find that a bit of a pain because there's so many times when I'm using the viewfinder and I just shut this, shut the door, expecting it to then turn off, and I forget that I've left it on because I haven't gone like that and turned it back off. So it's quite a lot of times that I do that, and that's quite irritating. Uh, the battery connects just using this tiny clip here. It's a little bit in the way because my tripod plate is fairly large. And as a result, this is kind of blocked, which, but it doesn't matter. I can move the tripod plate a little bit further forward, but the, tri the battery just unclips like that, comes off from there. And I can show you in there. There you go. There's the, um, there's the battery compartment and it attaches really easily. There we go. Simple to attach. Very, very quick. All right, moving a bit further around again. Some quality camera work here by me. But I did intend to do this really, really close because I wanted this, you know. Right, so ports around the side. SDI, so this carries the uh, HD signal in 10-bit 422. Remember the HD, HDMI port is only um, 8-bit 422. So this is the only output you have at that higher bit depth. Uh, but that's your SDI port with a nice, nice cover. These things, I always think they're going to break, but they never do. I've had lots of cameras with these sort of port covers on. They've never broken. They're fine. That slots very nicely over the top there. HDMI port also has your kind of weather seal cover on it. And uh, it's pretty sturdy, nice port, nicely, nicely mounted port there. This part of the camera here in general is pretty strong. It feels strong. Uh, start, start, the start, st stop, start button. And this is the main joystick. Some people love it, some people hate it. I love it. Just a push, move up and down, standard joystick control there, a bit like, um, I suppose a bit like you get on some uh, laptops, some kind of work laptops particularly have these, these sort of things on. Uh, it doesn't work like a mouse, it just works as a sort of up-down controller and uh, is usually used with your thumb like this. And I find it really nice, it's nice and easy to kind of just flick, or flick around stuff and it means you don't have to touch the screen, which is good as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and here is the power in socket, which you can can't really see there because of the light. Um, can you get an idea what that looks like? Not really. <laughs> and moving the other side of the eye cup, we have auto manual switch and then our ND filters, one, two, three, so one, uh, so quarter, 16th and 64th, 64th ND, and that's all manual. There's no automated ND on this camera at all. Carrying on around, very little, a lot less on this side. Uh, you've got the remote addition back in here, which people were happy about. 
and this is all you know just to put your hand so there's no actual stuff on this side uh, zoom control here on the top I'm really kind of blocked light wise here and uh, default is a focus magnifier for this button here and default for this is Irish push, push auto but we also have our fourth and our fifth custom buttons there too together with this one right down at the end this is our sixth custom button and this is the only button that doesn't have anything already assigned to it this is just a custom button and you can make that whatever you want down the front here two more sealed ports for mic and that has plug-in power as part of it as well so that's sort of very could be typically used if you weren't if you used for like a Rode VideoMic Pro if you weren't if you didn't have this attached and this is the multi-interface connect uh, connection here which I've never used before so I think that's what it's called oh sorry I'm gonna have to move it <coughs> yeah so there are the two ports down the front and that's really all there is to it I think is that the lot uh, we've got a microphone on the top here, which picks up nicely from all sort of angles. It's not majorly directional, which is good. I see that as a good thing. And let's have a look now at the MI multi, uh, the audio parts. So our input one and input two XLR here, which have nice kind of easy covers to attach. They just kind of flip downwards like that and then are dead easy to push back in place. Clipped, they are clipped in place, the XLRs. They're not like some XLRs which don't have these additional clips, the actual proper clips on them, and they just sort of are a bit loose. I think most do have locking now. I have seen a few devices without it. You do get the two little uh, cable tie, uh, the area for cables under there, so you can slot your cables into there and just keep them a little bit more out of the way. It attaches to the body with two screws, and I'll take, the, take this off in a minute to show you. On the top, we've got our cold shoe here and this is what I was talking about the other day in a video these kind of rattle around when there's nothing in them shame that's a bit of a an annoyance because when you have a uh, when you have a, a mic put in, in in here you can hear the noise from these and again this is another uh, another cold shoe to attach whatever you want to. I mean, I attach my lav mic here and I have my Rode uh, NTG3 on here. Record stop starts with a lock on. Zoom, which can be switched between fixed, variable and off. And then round the side, all our standard controls for audio. Uh, so we can have channel one, recording on both channel one and channel, uh, sorry, just channel one, or we can select channel one and channel two. And this is, uh, this is for input one, because sometimes you might have only input one being used and you might wanna record whatever's coming in on channel one to both channel one and channel two, and that's how you do that. You set that switch to, to up there. And then you've got various attenuations for input one, attenuations for input two, phantom power, whether you want it line level, mic or mic plus 48 volts for phantom power. And the, my, the record levels themselves, or you can have each input set to auto record level. And then we also have a low cut as well for both input one and input two. I've never tried that out, don't tend to use that too much, but obviously that is to reduce sort of things like wind noise or general background noise in kind of low, I don't know, it's just, it's just standard low cut really, probably around 80 hertz roll off. Uh, would have thought, but uh, never used it, so don't know how effective that is. And the, I'll just zoom out a little bit. This comes off pretty easily. Just unscrew this here, and unscrew this, and then slot it backwards, and that's it, that, that comes off dead easy dead easy and you're left with a camera that is extremely compact it really is just a a glorified home camcorder in a way that's what it looks like and uh yeah really really nice you can fit that in the palm of your hand very very easily it's a great size 
without that top bit on. But you do lose, of course, all that functionality. And this is the Sony MI stuff, so you can put other devices on here if you wanted to. You know, if you didn't need this bit for audio, if you had specifically Sony MI lav mics, then um, you could use them on this interface. But I pretty much can guarantee that 90% of the time, I'm gonna wanna have this attached. Um, he says, not being able to get this back on. So that just slots on there, and these go down, screw on. They're pretty sturdy. I mean, this is not, this does not feel cheap. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break. You know, you could mount some, I've had my Inferno mounted to the top of here, and that's a lot of leverage on this little bit of metal, or whatever it is, plasticky metal, and uh, it feels absolutely fine. Uh, Lens-wise, it is unfortunately, as I mentioned on my review video, a lens cap. Let's have a look at it anyway. There we go. There's the lens. And yeah, this just comes off easily like that. Like most lens hoods. Infrared, I forgot about the infrared down the front here. It does record um, infrared. Uh, it has a, it'll flip up the infrared filter and record, um, uh, you can record in low light conditions using that. And it also has, an, it's also an infrared receiver because I think that's, is that, I think that's the, trans, is that an infrared light and a receiver? Uh, because it has a remote on it too. And there you go. I think that's pretty much it. Yep, standard diopter there. Uh, yeah, there we are. A really close up and personal look at the Sony Z90. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. It's always nice when people do that. Uh, appreciate you watching and I will see you soon. Bye.